Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you for your leadership. Greatly appreciate it. Mr. Secretary, I appreciated the opportunity that we had uh, for a, a discussion on some Arctic-related uh, matters just last week. I, I expressed my, my appreciation um, for the department's initiative in, in this focus on the region. Um, we have seen the service level Arctic strategies released over uh, the last year or so. Those have been good, uh, actually exceptional. These strategies really give the attention to this region that I think uh, we recognize uh, needs to be a priority, or at least it gives the attention in, in writing. I was hoping that we would see the implementation and resourcing of these strategies reflected better in this budget request. Um, as I look at it, it seems like we, we've missed the mark a bit here. I think we recognize we're seeing uh, regional competition. Uh, we, are, we are seeing a level of activity in the region from those that uh, who would have ever thought that uh, the, the interest would be coming from, from China, that China would be resourcing, whether it is, it is uh, icebreakers, uh, training with the Russians. Uh, we know, we can see what is happening up there. Um, Senator Sullivan had an opportunity earlier uh, uh, this week, or last week, I believe, to question General Van Herc on how the services could use what was included in this year's budget request to implement their respective Arctic strategy. And his, his response was a little less than encouraging. He said, I see an inching along. We didn't move the ball very far down the field this year in the budget with regards to resources in, in the Arctic. So the question to you this morning is whether you believe we, are, we, we do have adequate funding for the Arctic strategies in the budget. What can we do to to use General Van Herc's words, to move the ball uh, forward in the Arctic in a, in a more responsive manner? Well, what we can do, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your support of our efforts in the Arctic, Senator. I, they, they've been uh, uh, tremendous over the years, and, uh, and certainly they've, they've helped us. You, you've helped us uh, in, in a major way. Uh, as you probably know, we are in the, uh, in the process of developing a national defense strategy. Uh, my goal is to make sure that our, our efforts in the Arctic, our requirements in the Arctic are, are reflected in that new national defense strategy. And so as we do that, it will help us to better link our resources to our strategy uh, going forward. And, uh, and again, uh, there, there is uh, some uh, capability there now, uh, but I agree with you. We need to we need to better resource uh, our Arctic efforts in the future. Well, as I've I've reminded folks when I start any conversation, um, right now the Arctic is not a hot spot, and I think we all would agree we want to keep it from becoming so. And uh, readiness is what uh, what we need to speak to. Uh, I will also want to raise the issue of, of mineral security in the context of, of national security. President Biden's executive order on America's supply chains required the department to produce a report identifying the risks in the supply chain for critical minerals. Um, your report states that the United States has always relied on imports of strategic and critical minerals to meet its public and private sector needs. We recognize that. We certainly have uh, strong domestic supplies in Alaska and elsewhere around the country. Um, so the, the, the question that some might ask is, why is this important from a national security perspective? What are the consequences if we fail to create a domestic supply chain? Uh, because we can continue to rely on resources from others. I think we recognize that right now um, we rely more heavily on China for these, these critical minerals, particularly in the area of rare earths, and that creates a vulnerability. It takes us back to a time and a place where we were very vulnerable, very reliant um, on others for, for oil. Uh, we're we're, we're kind of heading in that direction uh, a little bit. We're actually importing more oil from Russia right now than we are from Alaska. So from a national security perspective, um, if you could just speak to the consequences if we fail to secure 
a, a critical mineral supply chain. I think we've seen this play out uh, uh, in, in in the recent past. Here, it's 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 a it's a a, a risk to our to our national security uh, if we don't have uh, secure supply chains. Uh, and and so uh, what we're doing is there's 341 million dollars in this budget that uh, we've set aside to help us partner with. Uh, with U.S. companies, and, and 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 part of that is designed to help us uh, begin to uh, to establish our own capabilities for rare earth uh, elements uh, that uh, that can help us to maintain or create uh, more secure uh, supply chains. But it is certainly a risk uh, if we don't have uh, secure uh, supply chains. Uh, 